Welcome to episode five of Etherton Events Saturday Showcase. Uh, today we are interviewing New Mexico sculptor Bob Wilson, who makes sculptures of animals with found wood and metal scraps and tools. Hi, Bob. Hi, Daphne. How are, how are you? you? How are you doing? Thanks doing for making well. your, yeah. Thanks for making yourself available to talk about uh, your work in Etherton Gallery Show. Go figure. What's the environment in your studio like? Um, do you listen to music? Is it quiet? Is it neat? Is it messy? How, how do you begin? Yeah, messy. Messy, first of all. But it, it gets that way. And then over the last, well, the first week of the shutdown, I spent cleaning it up because in working for this show with you, I was doing just a lot of work and everything was going everywhere. So I have like five different sets of pliers that are all exactly the same, but they're all out. I'll have saws, I'll have rasps and files and this and that and shavings all over the place. So it took me three days to clean it up. So yeah, first it's messy. <laughs> I do listen to music. Um, mm -hmm. I know what Holly probably said, not being, <laughs> I'm not allowing music, but I, I really, I do like music a lot uh, in the studio. And I'll find that uh, like a particular piece will be associated with a particular artist. So Mexican gray wolf, the one of the big mm -hmm. wolves, that was all felonious monk. And, uh, uh -huh. and gray wolf, the other large wolf was all um, Elvis Costello. No, no, no. Elvis Costello was the man with two faces. But okay. the other wolf was, oh, Ray Lamontagne. I don't know if you've heard him, but, but, and then certain music, like if I'm doing metal work, um, uh, like it's, it's, it's songs that you know well. So Joni Mitchell or Bob Dylan or Grateful Dead or something like that. So that when the sound stops of the work you're doing, you can catch a song and then you're not going to hear it again for a while. And then you catch a song, but that familiar kind of work, but I do like music. It keeps me going. It's like coffee. How did you okay. select the work? for go figure um well first of all subject matter so as you mentioned a lot of animals mm -hmm. um some outliers some pieces are not animals but they're sort of related like the tree of knowledge has that snake in it and otherwise it's not but it's a natural form it's the tree it's adam and eve um but uh so i picked work that would range in size, both in wood and in metal, from smaller pieces to large pieces and everything in between. Um, and um, animal or not animal, a lot of it had to do with the way I treated the material. So the, the way I, I handled the wood or what exactly I did with scrap metal, uh, how I used paint. Um, so it was it was a lot of things that were it's like um tim gunn and heidi klum say on project runway it's like you want you want to show a range and at the same time a consistency so that combination of range and consistency is what i tried to do for you tell me about the work in the show in, in other words you created this series of sculpture using found materials yeah. Um, can you talk about the artistic process? I think the way, the, the choice of materials is particularly interesting. Yeah, I, uh, my process is in two parts. It would be always collecting materials, always, co always seeing junk or wood, um, raw wood, green, not green wood, but raw wood that is not milled wood. And, um, and having it around because it could become something or a part of something. Um, and then the other, I guess, um, the way I work has to do with more and more trusting that if I apply my skills, and I'm sort of, I don't wanna get too slick and too technical with my skills because I like, I like the rough stuff. I like what happens if I have a butcher knife to carve with instead of, you know, too many other things that make a smoother surface, mm -hmm. I want it to be rough. So in that way, 
I think it's, it's a lot like a folk artist uh, or a self-taught artist that uses pretty rudimentary, you know, um, um, tools. Well, it almost sounds like you're intentionally leaving the work just slightly unfinished. Like you're holding back what might give you, give someone else a sense of completion, but you don't want to go there. So you, you take a step back and you don't. Right. I think. That's Um, exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I don't, I don't want to do too much, but I want to still appreciate the form that I'm handed. Mm-hmm. Um, for instance, there's a small crow. It started with this beautiful little shape of the head and beak of a crow. And, and then I had all of this was during a, a uh, welding course that I took. So I had this big scrap of, or a pile of steel scrap, and I kept taking pieces. But it started with just that line and that it was suggestive and then it became the head of the small crow do you have i mean you you are not formally trained but i'm imagining that you read a lot um or maybe that's an assumption but did you have any people you look to as mentors or influences in your thinking yeah. or the way you work uh definitely I, you know i've always liked martin purrier and, and I think what I, what I like about that is the way he handles the wood. And he loves the wood. I mean, he just, yeah. he really has this affinity for it so that he's making these shapes that look functional, but they're not really functional. They're from function, but it's more form over function. Mm-hmm. And it's, they're just beautiful um, and very respectful of the material uh, without changing wood a lot to look like something else, letting wood remain wood. So I, I like that philosophy of approach. Um, I like Deborah Butterfield a lot. And one of my early dangers was, oh, does this look too much like Deborah Butterfield? You know, it's like, it's just so delicious what right. she does that you just you want it to, and then you can't, can't let it go there. So I have a few pieces that are a little too much Deborah Butterfield. Um, so those are two two mentors. Another one would be Holly. Holly Roberts uh, is my wife, and um, you know uh, she was also my kindergarten sweetheart of all things. That's what she said. Yeah, and we You're, we got it together. Fate. It was fate, and we got together after like twenty years after college and everything, and um, and then we stayed together, and I think. For me, Holly represents, uh, or her art represents what I want to do, but wasn't able to do that much of for 35 years. Well, thank you so much, Bob, for sharing your time with us. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. It's a delightful conversation. Thank you. You're welcome. And that concludes episode five of Etherton Events Saturday Showcase. Thank you.